Hello and welcome. Welcome to um, Hypnosis to Lose Weight. Um, this is a Q&A session, so this is a chance for people to ask questions. Anything related to hypnosis and uh, lose weight is fine by me. <laughs> That's the theme of this show. Uh, other shows might be different, but this show is about losing weight or managing weight or controlling weight in some one way or another. So it might be changing your habits, uh, it might be eating less, it might be eating slower... It might be eating like a gourmet. I don't know what it might be, but this is a show where it's your opportunity. Um, I've got about, um, well, a lot of years experience. I've been in the field of hypnosis for about 13 and odd years, probably more. Um, so this is a chance to ask an expert in hypnosis some questions about losing weight. I know there's a lot of you out there that need to lose weight or want to lose weight or a desire to lose weight uh, as one in three of us are obese or overweight so um, it's a good opportunity to get in there and, and get some knowledge and, and uh, understanding really insight into how hypnosis does such a sterling job in helping people to lose weight. Um, I will keep an eye on questions, but if you if, if there's no questions tonight, or if I don't see questions tonight, um, definitely um, if you want to ask a question, uh, it will be going out on, on a, a um, recorded um, video. So if you want to just put hashtag replay in the uh, chat um, and ask your question, then I'll definitely get back to you on that um, at a later date. Um, but if there is no questions, that's okay, because I have something planned to share with you in the meantime. So I'll keep going until um, someone does ask a question or I see something pop up that I can help you with. And I'm very interested in helping you with questions. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Like I say, it can be anything hypnosis and weight related. I'm happy to take anything that you want to ask me going forward. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to share something with you um, about why people use hypnosis. You may have ne never come across hypnosis before. You may, it may be a strange word. Uh, it may be something that you've heard of and thought, that's a bit weird. Um, you may have even um, had somebody in your family or friends or know someone, know a celebrity who's tried it and got a great result. It is incredibly good. It is good evidence based for hypnosis for weight. Uh, for all kinds of reasons, which I'll go into in a bit. Um, but I'm just going to share my screen today just so that I can see the kinds of things that I want you to see. I want you to understand about hypnosis today. So this is a, a general level. So this is about hypnosis generally. Um, it works across the board with, so long as it's got a psychological component to it, um, i.e. something psychological, emotional, social, um, behavioural, then usually we can tackle it using hypnosis. Um, so there are absolutely a hundred reasons why you, you want to use hypnosis. These are just a few of the common ones. Um, so the good old one um, where mod modern med medicine has failed. So you may have tried lots of things by going to see a doctor uh, and he's, he, he or she has prescribed something to help you to lose weight or to stop smoking or to manage um, some kind of behaviour or phobia or fear or something and they've given you something but it hasn't really worked, it's not really done the trick. Um, so that's one thing is that uh, instead of the medicine you want to seek a complementary kind of solution, something that will uh, reach a psychological thing uh, where the medicine just can't get there, uh, some emotional underlying reason why it might be there. Um, sometimes when we are in the middle of uh, an eating problem, um, whether it's a serious one or a very mild one, we kind of don't want to acknowledge that we're eating too much or drinking too much alcohol. Um, we are not ready for change. We are quite liking actually what we, um, what we want, want to do with our eating. We get great rewards from eating as we do with alcohol and, and, and cigarettes if you smoke. Um, and other kinds of drugs. So it gives us a lot of reward other than energy and fuel. And so uh, sometimes it's difficult acknowledging that we've got something going on that we need to resolve. Um, but usually that's when people come see us, is when they're ready to change, when they've reached that point 
where it might be a reward, but it's also something that they need to deal with. It's causing them serious problems in their life or just smile problems and they just want to do something about it. Um, they may have tried, you may have tried alternative approaches other than medicine. Um, you may have tried alternative therapies. Um, hypnosis, hypnotherapy is a complementary therapy, so it complements medicine, it works alongside it. Whereas you might have tried an alternative kind of um, therapy, which um, isn't necessarily evidence-based, it's just people just use it, they find it useful, um, and uh, that really hasn't done the trick either. We get a lot of recommendations from other people. So you may have, like I said before, seen a family or a member or a friend got a great result, say, from stopping smoking, because it's great for that too, or um, to manage anger or stress or nail biting or some other habit, it may be something else. Um, and you think, oh, I would love to, um, you know, go and uh, get a bit of that for myself and see if I can and lose a bit of weight with it. Um, so it may have been uh, recommended to you from others or it may be a referral from someone else, a professional, your GP or someone like that who's suggested you might want to try it as, a, as an option. Let me just check to make sure I'm not missing any questions at this stage. <laughs> I know um, there may be questions, so I'll just check. Hi Anna, how are you? Um, so there are things going on uh, which, you, which, which trigger us to go in and get some, do something about it. Um, you may have seen an advert, you may have seen me on, on here on, on a live or something and think, oh my goodness, she's speaking my language, I really got to go and do something about this. This would really help in my world if I could get something sorted uh, with my eating habits for sure. Um, so yeah, tried everything else and it's a last resort. That's, that's a shame when people do that because um, it's a beautiful modality. It's one of the best, in my opinion, uh, to solving problems quite quickly. It's a very solution focused, can be solution focused, can, can also be historical. We look at, back at historical problems and see where it might have come from. But um, it's quite a brief therapy, I guess is what I'm saying. You only need a few sessions in order to kickstart something. Uh, in in your in your body or your brain, and and then you're off on your own. You, you kind of it just like triggers. It's like turning on a light switch. It just kind of triggers something, and then you're off with it. And um, so you don't need to like go and see someone for like years on end, like some therapists. It's a very brief one. So you only typically need a few sessions to, you know, get that get that whatever it is started that you need to kickstart that problem uh, solution to that problem. So these are some of the reasons why people choose to use hypnosis. Um, there are loads more, like I say, but they, they're some of the, the reasons uh, people might do that. Um, if that triggers anything in you, if that thing, if you think, ah, one of them suits, you know, it kind of, it really resonates with me, don't hesitate to give me a call. I will be putting up um, the, um, the uh, link later on. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> so I'll just put Anna's uh, good morning, keep up the good work. Thanks, Anna. Um, and yes, so I'm going to just share another screen, actually, which is um, particularly why people choose hypnosis for weight. So let me just uh, pop that up. So why do people come and see us for weight when they've got so many things? There's diets, there's pills, there's gastric banding, there's all kinds of things people can go and get done. Um, nips and tucks and all that kind of stuff. Well, a lot of those a lot of those things don't tackle the psychological aspect of what's going on. They don't tackle the behavioural aspect of what's going on. So even if um, they've tried everything else, which most people say they have when they come see us, um, it's typically because they're going down the wrong street with the the modality that they're using. It's actually not hitting the spot in quite the right way for them to do what they need to do with it. So um, we've also got um, uh, people that um, talk about regular relapse, that where they go this down this street of yo-yo dieting. So they do a, a diet like a, um, you know, a, I don't know, 
intermittent fasting diet or a protein rich diet or carbohydrate whatever it might be there are so many diets out there you know you've been on one if you've got a weight problem because people try and they yo-yo up and down and then they find they they kind of balance out for a while and then uh, it's back down again they relapse and they're back down to you know dealing with it again and finding other solutions to the problem so it's forever like a revolving door i guess in terms of managing weight and that's really not good for you it's not good for your brain it's not good for your mind it's not good for your body um so hypnosis is actually great for this kind of stuff because what it does is it's it creates sustainable results it manages stuff at the core it doesn't just stick a plaster over it and and up for, up for the best it actually um tackles some of the pertinent issues that are at the core of why you're eating the way you are or not as the case may be some people come because they are um, going through some life changes, maybe um, some disability, for example, where you can't be as physical as you used to be. Maybe you've got an injury of some kind and you can't be, uh, do because what a lot of people do is they just scoff, 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 eat what they want. But then what they do is on the other side of it, they exercise a lot. So they're expending the calories. Uh, it's not rocket science to c create equilibrium with your with your weight, but the idea is is that if if you're expending more calories than you're putting in, then obviously you're going to lose weight. There's going to be a deficit. So, uh, but but when people have got a disability or kind of an injury, then the problem uh, occurs that they can't do the physical side of it. So they'll still scoff, 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 eat the wrong things in the wrong way at the wrong times, but. Um, the difference here is, is that they're not expending the calories, so they're piling the weight on while they're, they're, they're injured or um, in that state. Um, people say, I'm doing all the right things, Karen. I've tried, I, I do this, uh, I know how to do that. It's uh, easy to do this, but um, for some reason, um, I'm not losing the weight. And that's common, uh, that people just can't understand if they're doing everything right, as the book textbook tells them to do. Why are they not losing the weight? Well, it's two things. One is there may be something emotional going on, lurking down there in the background, which is creating a blockage of some kind, um, which is preventing them from losing weight in, in one respect. It might sound a bit spiritual. <laughs> it might sound a bit, ooh. But it is, it is true, is that if people have had something going on in their past, sometimes um, they hold on to things which... Uh, we can help to un un unravel, unpackage, and uh, figure out what's going on there, and that usually clears the blockage. Um, the other thing is, uh, it's common in research, in psychological research, uh, that uh, people underreport <laughs> when they self-report. So what we do is we often get people to complete diaries, and people sometimes hate them because it actually, if you if you do it properly, if you monitor exactly what you're eating all day, every day, you find that probably you're snacking here and there or you're eating more than you think you are. And that often is the reason why people um, are not moving anyway, is because they, um, there's a little bit of denial goes on because, and not just denial, because denial is a conscious, semi-conscious thing. There's some sense of we forget. It's very easy to forget that we go snacking at the fridge here and there or we snack in the car or we take something at work and we forgot we've had it. Um, so the, the nice thing is about what we do is we get people to monitor what they've eaten uh, on a daily basis. So there's, there's very much a... Um, uh, a reality uh, principle going on here. <laughs> uh, rather than idealism, I do everything correct and I do everything right. Um, and there's no blame in here, by the way. I'm not blaming anyone. I do it myself. I, I can easily forget that I've eaten something when I, when I, uh, I didn't think I had. Um, motivation can be a big thing. Um, people, when they are mentally unwell through depression, grief, loss, separation, uh, loneliness, just feel generally unhappy and unfulfilled. There can be ap appetite disturbances because of our lack of motivation. Uh, which affects affects us in a big way. So sometimes uh, we know, again, everything we need to do, but unfortunately when we have a go at doing it, we just kind of relapse or we just can't implement what we've planned, etc. We don't stick to the plan. 
Um, if you're on medication, particularly if you're on things like corticosteroids, like uh, prednisone, <laughs> for all you out there that have got some kind of inflammatory condition where you need some, um, or, you know, immunosuppressant or anti-inflammatory medication, prednisone is terrifically terrible for um, uh, causing people to put on weight or put distribute weight actually in the wrong places. Um, so it may be something like that. Even uh, other kinds of uh, medication like uh, sleeping pills, even even appetite suppressant pills, slimming pills can actually cause you to put weight on, believe it or not, if they're used in the wrong way. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so yeah, all sorts of medication have side effects, which will be weight gain. So if you look at the packet and you look at the instructions within the packet, you'll find some of those medications you're taking might actually be uh, contributing to your weight, thyroid problems, things like that. People after pregnancy, because during pregnancy you eat a lot because you're eating for two. Not really, but people do. <laughs> um, uh, but you do put a lot of um, unnecessary weight on. You're carrying a big baggage around, of course, and then you're not exercising as much as you would like, but you continue to eat as you do. You might get cravings, etc. And then afterwards you're left with a big pile of baggage, which then you want to come and get rid of. Um, unexplained conditions like infertility, um, you might come and see us because you can't get pregnant. Um, it might be that, could be all sorts of reasons why you can't get pregnant, but one thing might be that if you are incredibly overweight, uh, that could be contributing significant, significantly to that. After surgery, so if people have, because uh, with the disability thing actually, so if people have um, knee operations or something which puts them out of action for a while, then you can sense that they're going to be immobile and they're not going to do the expenditure of calories. Therefore, they're going to continue probably eating what they used to eat before surgery, but then after surgery, they can't move and they're continuing to put those calories on the body instead of expending them using exercise. Food tolerances, intolerances. Um, so yeah, a lot of people have food intolerances. Um, so it's not we're not just talking about putting on weight here. We're talking about things people um, might be eating things that are actually self harming. They're damaging themselves. So it might be that we are helping them to um, avoid foods which are causing them damage to their body and um, and, and re re reprogram their brain into thinking that that's actually not a good thing to do. Um, people have phobias of certain foods: tomatoes, eggs chilies, uh, all sorts of things. Um, lots of weird and wonderfuls and sometimes peas, <laughs> sprouts and some things like that. So it might be that some people have got phobias of certain foods, either um, seeing the food or eating the food, swallowing the food or having the food in their body. And so um, it may be that we help them to overcome that phobia of the food. Same with allergies. I also help a lot of people with who have to have a strict diet, either because they've had a um, gastric bypan, gastric bypan, by <laughs> yeah, one of them, um, where they can't, uh, the stomach's shrunk considerably because they've got a band around the stomach, and they can't actually uh, eat very much at all. So, but they're finding themselves eating as they normally would. And uh, it's very painful and it's not good for their health. It's actually going to cause them a lot of problems. Um, but on the other hand, uh, people that have to have a very, very, very strict diet for one reason or another, um, we might work with those too to help them to stick to that diet if it's incredibly important to do so. Just going to check to make sure I don't have any more questions because I'm just waffling on here, just in case. Um, I don't think so. I'm not sure I do. Um, but again, like I say, if you're watching this on re on the replay, can you just put hashtag replay if you want to ask a question and I will get back to you and then I'll do my best to answer as many questions uh, as I can. I'm going to do these actually um, for a few weeks. So if you're seeing this one and you're thinking, oh, I would love to um, ask a question, I've missed my opportunity, you haven't, because I am going to, um, excuse me, I am going to put this out again, uh, uh, probably next Thursday and probably the Thursday after that but I will put it out on on a schedule so you can see it um yeah special events now these are nice because people are getting married they're going on holiday um getting engaged all that kind of stuff happy happy stuff where they um are looking for a new relationship maybe for example 
they're on Tinder and they don't like the way they look and they want to lose weight and put a new picture up. Um, that kind of stuff. So they come in to help help um, gain trim, gain, gain uh, shape for getting in that wedding dress or that uh, bikini on holiday or something like that. Um, so there's all kinds of reasons why people do attend for weight. As I say, um, if you have any questions, do shoot me a line and uh, I am going to leave it at that today. Um, I'm hoping that uh, future ones, we will have a lot more people on asking questions. This is the first, so I don't expect this to uh, to be un unreasonable that people are not asking questions today, but they will. And the more people ask questions, the easier it becomes for you to understand how hypnosis works, because I can explain it to you. <laughs> In a way, we've got a real case study and if you feel really confident, you can come on board and I'll invite you in as a guest and I can help ask some questions and uh, give you some bit of coaching, maybe, you know, uh, maybe that's an incentive to get you on screen. Uh, but I don't expect, um, you know, to uh, for that to, to happen this time around because I'm about to finish. So, hi, Sandra. Thanks for joining us. Hey, hooks to you too. Uh, you're awesome. I'm going to leave it there. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Sandra, for joining me today. Um, I'll hopefully catch up with you all soon. Do tune in for the next one and uh, have a good evening or a good afternoon or a good morning, wherever you are in the world. See you, see you later. Bye-bye.